What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller, and it's time for a little orological history. Now you guys know me as a vintage watch nerd, and I'm proud of that, and I've taken it upon myself here and there to sprinkle around some orological historic episodes, you know, exploring the histories of some defunct watchmakers like Elgin, Wittenauer, Waltham, just to name a few. But there are some watchmakers that are still around to this day that are kind of, um, I don't want to say like unsung heroes, but they're definitely underrated, okay? Like when we look at these larger holding groups like Swatch Group, there are some watchmakers that they own, like Omega, that are just the golden goose. Uh, but there are other watchmakers that are kind of thrown by the wayside, like Mito. And when we look at Mito further, we realize, you know, the Baroncelli heritage. Uh, they have a bunch of really, really, really cool watches. And I just wish the spotlight would shine on them a little bit longer. But what about Richemont, right? Because Richemont, I would argue, has like way more heavy hitters than even Swatch Group does. I mean, let's list a couple. Uh, Langa, Cartier, IWC, JLC, Mont Blanc, um, Piaget, Panerai, Vacheron Constantin, Vacheron Constantin, excuse me. But lost among these timepiece titans is a more humble watchmaker with a much more humble price tag. Baum et Mercier, or Baum and Mercier. So it's true, Baum et Mercier might not be as expensive or fancy schmancy as Vecheron Constantin or Gégé la Coutre, but uh, yeah, they're still a legit Swiss watchmaker. So who are they? Where did they come from? What are some cool watches they produce? We're going to explore all of that and more today on this little orological field trip back in time. It is. 12.07 p.m. Let's get down to business. Real quick, guys, it's time for another giveaway. That's right, there's three chances to win this time. Vero has very generously offered to give away one of their Vero workhorses to one of my lucky subscribers. And then Orient has given me two watches to give away. So that's three chances to win three very cool watches. And you don't want to miss out. So how does this happen and when does it happen? Well, winners will be chosen once T3 Time to Drive hits 10,000 subscribers. That's my car channel. We upload like almost once a week like we're, we're we're hitting it really hard guys we're, we're very consistent round of, round of applause so if you're a fan of all things automotive please consider subscribing to that channel because again once that hits 10,000, you guys have three chances to win three very cool watches and i made a promise to you guys that once that channel hits 10,000 subscribers i will supercharge my porsche 944 I'm not kidding. I'm going to do it. I might regret it because it's a lot of money and uh, the engine might explode. One of my lights just turned off. This is really freaky because the last time I mentioned supercharging my 944, a light also turned off. This is very clearly a, a bad omen. But guys, please, I'll leave a link in the description below to that channel. Subscribe. Once we hit 10,000 subscribers, Vero is giving away a watch to one of you guys and Orient is giving away two watches to you guys. It's going to be a blast and you guys deserve it because you've supported me through these years, through all my various endeavors, and I don't take that lightly. So thank you guys. It's just my little way of saying I love ya. Back to the episode. Okie dokie. So in 1830, two brothers hailing from Swiss Jura, Louis Victor and Celestine Baum, or Celestin Baum, founded Ferret Baum. Guys, I'm trying so hard with the accents. If I don't even if I don't attempt an accent, people will complain. And if I do attempt an accent, people will complain. So whatever, I'm just having fun with it. Fuck it. Belgium. Vivi. 21 years later, in 1851, Baum Brothers was established in London, instantly garnering, you know, an increase in positive reputation and more brand equity. Now they have a larger portion of Europe buying their timepieces. But as we've seen when we look at, like, other watchmakers, they've changed their name a thousand times, and this wouldn't be the last time the Baum Brothers changed their name. Fast forward to 1918, another member of the Baum family, who I believe was the company director, his name was William Baum, uh, decided to found Baum et Mercier, which is 
the timepieces that you know we know nowadays. This happened when he decided to partner with Paul Mercier, and uh, they started to focus on producing specifically wristwatches. So again, this is now uh, becoming the bomb at Mercier that we know today. And this was a very good move for the company because in 1919, Baume et Mercier uh, actually was awarded the Geneva Seal for their prowess in watchmaking. Uh, guys, we can probably do a whole episode on the Geneva Seal, but it's probably like the highest award uh, a watchmaker can get. What's interesting is this watchmaker, Baume et Mercier, actually thrived like for numerous decades, even through the quartz crisis. And this is partly due to their release of the Baume et Mercier. Riviera. Now this is still a model they produce to this day, but it had a very, you know, angular bezel. It was very, uh, you know, a sign of the time. More industrial, edgy looks were coming out with the Royal Oak and with the overseas and the engineer. But it was really in 1988, a year before I was born, that Baumet Mercier uh, truly was solidified as the watchmaker we know and love today because that was the year they were acquired officially by Richemont Group. And they purposefully acquired this brand as one of their lower tier offerings. And that's not a dig on Baume et Mercier. It's just a fact, right? When we look at the price tags of all the other watches that Richemont Group owns, um, they're often starting in the high five figures, but you can look at most of Baume et Mercier's catalog and they, yeah, they're in the four figures. They have some that are in the, uh, you know, 600s, but they do have a couple that are five figure watches, but for the most part, Part, they're much, much, much more accessible than, say, a Piaget. So, okay, we already mentioned the Riviera, and we kind of know the timeline from the company starting as Ferrier Baum to uh, Baum Brothers to Baum et Mercier to Baum et Mercier owned by Richemont Group. But what are some other really cool watches that this watchmaker has produced? Well, we're going to jump into their catalog right now because there are a bunch of really cool watches, one of which is actually very, very expensive, so let's take a look. The first watch I wanted to talk about is a watch from their Clifton series. Now, they have a bunch of different models under the Clifton series, but this is the Clifton 10450, $4,100, about $4,150. Uh, this is a really nice dress watch moon phase with a pointer date and very, very kind of smooth lugs going into the case. It's a very nice looking, elegant watch with a white dial. We should also mention this watch has a day. So you can see this is kind of like an old school triple date layout, moon phase, day, date, very, very elegant, very clean. And again, a mix of vintage and modern. Now, another one of their more prolific lines would be the Classima line. So again, Clifton, Classima, these are very common names in their catalog. And you're gonna see a bunch of various, uh, you know, variations of these watches. This is the Classima 10695. It's an automatic date and you're getting a really nice Nice sunburst slate dial with a kind of uh, khaki Rio um, or it's just a very nice contrast and it looks very elegant I love the Roman numerals uh, and again you're getting this for about $1,900 so it isn't like the most affordable watch out there but when we look at other watches from Richemont group this is highly accessible Speaking of accessible, there's something under $1,000 in their catalog, and it would be their Balm 10686. It is a quartz watch for $600. You're getting a PVD coated case, really nice kind of uh, slate look, uh, stealthy. This is for someone who likes kind of almost Bauhausy minimalist abstract watches. I One thing I absolutely love about this watch is the crown at the 12 o'clock. Uncommon, very interesting. Um, I'm not really a minimalist dude, um, and I don't know if I would spend $600 on this specific watch, but if you're into that minimalist look, um, this is very nice. Uh, again, they pull off the, the, the circular date window actually pretty nicely in this watch because of how circular everything is with the, uh, you know, second register and then the, the perfectly round case. Uh, it, the circular date window just works in this case. So let's say you like that kind of futuristic, interesting dial layout, but you want something automatic and you don't want to spend the money on a quartz. Well, for a lot more, for $1,700, they have the Balm 10590, uh, the Balm Ocean Limited Edition 42 millimeter. This is automatic and it looks like futuristic 
out there like sci-fi. Um, again, circular date window with color matched day. Uh, excuse me, color matched date numeral, which is not something you see very often. Again, there's some green tones here with the handset and the numerals on the date are also color matched, which is, it looks very nice. Again, crown very nicely knurled at the 12 o'clock. I don't know if this is my style, but it is very interesting and it's cool to see them produce something like this kind of out there. I wish this, this got more attention because um, it is really cool to see them do it. Again, not something I would typically wear, but I dig it. So we've taken a look at some watches like $600. We've taken a look at some watches around two grand, but what about something very impressive, exorbitantly expensive, just under $30,000, $26,800, a perpetual calendar. That's right. Balmet Mercier might be one of Richemont Group's more accessible brands, but it doesn't mean they don't produce really impressive, complicated watches. The Clifton 10583, it's an automatic perpetual calendar, 42 millimeters with their in-house BM13 caliber. It's a five day automatic movement with 18 karat pink gold and a gilt moon. Uh, this thing looks stunning. Again, it's a Clifton. It's gonna be a little bit oversized for people that want a more understated dress watch, but it is a perpetual calendar with a whole lot of information on it. And I actually really dig the layout and I love how the uh, company's signage is just above the six o'clock. Uh, it looks very nice in this case. The dial layout is very nice. Very interesting lugs. Again, probably wears a bit big on the wrist, but this is proof that Bommet Mercier shouldn't be overlooked just because they are a lower tier watchmaker for Richemont Group. Now guys, I typically don't like open hearts. When we take a look at this next watch, another watch from the Classima line, so we've taken a look at two Cliftons and this would be the second Classima, we see an open heart with a very nice tasteful cutout uh, showing uh, that internal from the front. It looks very nice. I love the striped pattern from the center cut dial, very dynamic. I like the Roman numerals and I loved the blue handset. Looks very, very nice, very tasteful. Let's see the price on this one. Again, this is probably gonna be 42 millimeters. Yep, most of their watches are in the 42 millimeters. Unfortunately, this is not super accessible as an entry level watch. Uh, this is above three grand, it's $3,050, uh, but it looks very, very nice with that guilloche center cut. Um, yeah, just really nice dress watches from this understated, underrated watchmaker. And the final watch I wanna share with you is one of their sports watches, not from the Riviera line. It's one of their, uh, actually this is a Clifton technically, it's the Clifton 10341, which again, 42 millimeter uh, date complication. This is their diver, it's their Clifton Club. And um, it kind of reminds me of something, I, I feel like I'm, this is, like Mido would probably produce this, or even Hamilton, I feel like, could produce this. Uh, but yeah, very nice contrast with that orange and that black PVD. Uh, this You really got to be into this watch to want a sports watch like this. $3,050 automatic movement. It's a diver. It's a dive watch. Like, yeah. 38 hour power reserve, automatic, 100 meter water resistance rating. Yeah, that's their sports watch. So guys, we've taken a look at their history a little bit. We've taken a look at a few watches in their catalog. You know, I might not personally love everything Baum et Mercier has to offer, but they are still a legit Swiss watchmaker. And we should acknowledge their history. We should acknowledge the things they produce. And, you know, from watches around $600 to around $30,000, Baum et Mercier is nothing to scoff at, in my opinion. Even if I think Richemont Group is upping their price for, for no real reason. I'm not sure a lot of these watches need to be, you know, uh, above $1,000, but... You know, it's it, just my opinion. All I do is look at watches day in and day out, but what do I know? So guys, what do you think of B&M? <laughs> BM, bowel movement, <laughs> poop joke. I always gotta get a poop joke in here. <laughs> Come on, man. Do you own a Bum at Melcier? Which would be your favorite? What's your experience with this watchmaker? Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. And there you have it, guys. Another little bit of history here on the Time Teller channel. Love doing these episodes. Whole lot of fun. Again, I'm kind of a vintage watch geek, and I love seeing and learning where these watchmakers have come from. So thank you for watching this content and allowing me to produce this content and study up on these things. Because again, making this content is truly, truly fun for me. So guys, Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me in today's episode. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I will catch you on the next one. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. And always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Hey.
Little dabble do ya.